Hey guys, welcome to the PML. Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are ready for some awesome PML, aka Paladins Minor League action. We'll be starting yeah. off today in EU, but I'm not alone. I'm here voice? with Pretty Air. It's me. What's That's up, y'all? He's here yeah. with us. Good. It's going to be a good um, one, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited. We have a. Uh, we have EU starting off first, which is first off, it's Sour Team versus OTP, which oh, I'm yeah. really excited for. I'm excited to see what they got for us. Definitely. This is a region that's already, you can tell, very tight out of the gate. Nobody, like, uh, you know, looking at some of the console league, you know, standings from yesterday, you have that, like, three win, two win, one win, no win team. Everyone's got a dub so far in Europe. It is as, it's as close as it could be, right? You know, you could have maybe a couple teams tied in the middle or, you know, even win loss. But these teams are going at it. They're at each other's throats. A lot of roster changes have been made in the EU section of the minor league due to a lot of call-ups, so shout-outs to that. Congratulations to a lot of the European players getting their shot at the big league. Yeah, I agree. Sour team being in first, 2-1. Two, two and one. You said it perfectly, Nick. All of them already have a dub, a W under their belt. 2-1 and one for all business as well. OTP being 1-2, and two, negative 1 differential, with Penta being in very, very last with a mm. negative 3 differential. Weird to see that. Yeah, very weird <laughs> to see that after MSI, right? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, that team... It's different. Basically gutted. Yeah, yeah. All of them getting called up for the, <laughs> for the most part. Ovim uh, and I believe Bolka are still around there. Ovim is just the god at training up uh, future PPL prospects. Right, yeah. I, 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 I've said this before. I want him to get his, though. I, wanna, yeah, I right. want him to get his shot at the PPL for sure. Yeah, I can understand that for sure. I mean, most of the time, it's like all of these people get swept away, and then Ovum yeah. here is still in it's happened PML. Like, it has, I think, three times. Yeah, it's happened. It's, it's happened quite a few times yeah. for him to still be in like PPL, and everyone else gets swept up into greatness. Unfortunate for him, <laughs> but at the same time, though, today once again, Sour Team versus OTP. I'm very, very interested to see what we have in store for both of these teams. I'm really excited, of course, to see what it is that we have to get into these matches. Both of these teams, Sour Team, being used to really just have a bunch of veterans on their team. Sure. So our team still being a very good team overall. The map bans are coming up, though, and we're going to see what it is these teams have in store for us for Ban Bazaar and Frozen Guard are the first two okay. that are being taken away from us, followed by Ascension Peak and Jaguar Falls. Okay. Interesting. I'd say the Jaguar Falls is the only one really out of, right. you know, the ordinary. We've been seeing a lot of that map lately. Mm -hmm. Um Part of that is I don't think it's super polarizing. Like, I don't think anyone's out there just hating Jaguar Falls. Right. I think when you ban Jag, it's probably because more so your opponent is very solid on it. Mm -hmm. Because you can run so much here, like I said, it's it's not very polarizing, right? Any strategy, you, hopefully you have a strategy that you right, run yeah. as a team in Paladins, and that <laughs> strategy can, can likely do you pretty well. Uh, Jack Falls. Yeah, I agree. There's too many small areas in which you could actually break out yeah. on those fights, and pretty much anyone can be played there. Any blaster, anyone it is who you feel like. Timber Mill, however, uh, is the first what? match. I digress. This is interesting what? because we literally never see Timber Mill. Timber Mill is no. always banned. They don't necessarily like to play on Timber Mill. Can you explain to me why that is, Nick? It's, uh, like I said, Jaguar Falls is not polarizing, and right, the yeah. map doesn't hard dictate what you play. It's just the opposite here on Timber Mill. Right. I mean, the map entirely dictates what you play. There is a very specific food chain on this map. It revolves around snipers as well as the flankers and some of those, you know, apex predators that you're looking out for uh, specifically to balance out what is strong here, which is those long lines of sight. Those are what dictate kind of the play style. They do seem to hover the main. Con, Genos, Ash, Torval, all off of the map. Four bands have already That's gone surprising. through. May actually is gone as well, and that is very surprising to see Ash down there. You normally don't see that unless you're trying to leave these characters open because McCoy and yeah. Atlas are both open, and as you see, Sour Team's already hovering it, potentially taking it as well. Right. Well, so let me clarify. I mean, We're these bands aren't started. not weird. Right, they're yeah. just kind of they're a little bit stranger for the map. You can already see the difference in priority in this map. Now, Atlas doesn't necessarily fall into the same bucket as the other tanks. He's by far the most effective range when it comes to a frontliner, so he's still good. He still is where he is, but immediately you can see Maeve, Eevee, right, yeah. Strix. Those are the top. Those are not going to be the top three on any other map in the game. They're right. right here. Right, exactly. Strix and Furia, just as you mentioned, are locked in on OTP side. Makoa, once again, being hover Sour Team. Now, I'm not too sure the about letting the them just achieve Atlas, achieve protection. this Makoa, achieve it's, it this is scary. Grover. It's very, very scary. It's a situation you don't see this most teams put themselves in. Normally, they pick rest. one, and the other team takes the other. But in this situation, not only were they locked in both, 
but Eevee Atlas was taken, and then Makoa was passed up on OTP mm. side for that. But I do like you the Skyhugger because that here. could be a very big Makoa counter. Yeah, they're getting counterpicked at the moment. I mean, anything oh, with high HP, so Sky just kind of shreds to right. pieces. Um, does struggle in the mobility department? Obviously, it's it's on paper. Yes, it is the correct you know way to go sometimes Time against these big front liners. Even Grover too. Grover can be you know very very self sustaining. When you factor in how much health he gets just passively in a fight, it, it's going to make a big difference. However, Sky's going to have to position really really well. Willow is going to have to be super super aware of this Strix. Everyone's got a role to fill on Sour right, Team, exactly. but they have the champions for the jobs if everybody can step up to the plate. Yeah, I agree with that. It'll be really interesting to see how this Strix will be played as well as all the other characters it is, such as Sky, Willow, will be played on this first map. But I digress. Timber Mill, get ready to get it started. Throw it down to the casters. Well, thank you so much. As we do get started, a nice Tuesday morning and nothing screams EU like going to Timber Milk, right there. Yeah, and especially with these, these compositions are interesting too. I like the triple DPS, and I think that's a great answer to the Makoa. I think that the Makoa is going to have, I, I hate, it's weird to say this, I think that Makoa is going to have a hard time. It's one of those weird things that, and I always talk about like when you, when you look at tanks on this map, like I think Sheepa is going to have a pretty clean run just because yeah. long range, right? Hit scan. Makoa is going to really, really pray to hit some of these hooks, but there's a Mave, there's a Sky, both of which are pretty slippery early on. Yeah. So and then Nixus is just going to stealth step to the right. Cool, you missed your hook. Step to the left. I'm going to start shooting. Yeah, the speed boost, too, for the stealth. <laughs> if he's running that in his kit, it's going to make it hard to exactly tell where he's going to be. Starting up early here, trying to lock down the enemy high ground. But no sniper on the other team. Maybe trying to find yeah. the Willow, but they're all just sitting in the half shell. This is some, some MSI Elevate kind of play. Just going to... All pile up, stack on top of each other. Uber's Patey going to be on the EV this one around. You're going to be looking around for him to come target Nixus, but it's going to be a couple of shots piled into this Makoa. A lot of pressure being put on the Sour Team as their death ball is just taking so much damage. Ineffable gets burned up there for first blood, and the rest of the team has nowhere to go. They're all half health or lower. Yeah, this draft from one OTP is already showing how good it's going to be if they can get this around early. I, I think Sour Team played exactly into what One Trick Pony wanted. They grouped up inside one ball. They let OTP get that surround, and then there was no way for them to touch the point. They have the sky specifically to burn the Makoa. They have Nixus to break the shields. That Makoa is going to have to move with somebody else if he wants to get anything done. And this entire time, One Trick Pony just well sitting on the point, 90% capped up right now. Sheepa going to jump down, try to get a little bit of pressure here, but no one has been looking at this Anar pretty much the entire time. Good shots coming down from Nixus to be able to clean that one up on William Birkin. And even though you get that consolation prize of Andrew Doodle, it doesn't feel like it's been enough just yet, but they have reclaimed the point in favor of Sour Team. Yeah, Wonder Pony disengaging here. It's kind of smart. Stop me needs to be careful. Ooh, actually, that's good for him that Uber's Patey got his blink got eaten by that wall. He has to back up. Actually going in for Stop Me, maybe, but getting healed back up. How is OTP going to get this touch here? Looks like it's going to have to be to fit from the side. Just going to be bouncing around. Has the mobility. Midnight's going to be charged up, popped out. Going to be able to get the touch for the overtime. And that's going to allow Stop Me to walk on in. At least contest a little longer. William Bergen's going to get taken down. Nixus right before he gets into cover. But the Whirlwind is popped for Doe. Not going to get any of that healing. It's just kill after kill after kill here as One Trick Pony burn them down and are looking to capture this after Ineffable goes for one last touch. This is worst case scenario on Timber Mail. If you're playing Timber and, you, and their sniper is basically uncontested the entire game, I feel for William Birkin right yeah. now. I've been there, man. I, I have been on that point looking up at the sniper going, one day. So do you think the double blaster was worth skipping Kinesa? I, so far, no. I mean, especially with the composition they're against. Willow's great at spamming in one set area, but everyone on OTP are just surrounding. They're trying to take high ground. Your Willow's not really going to get that. Maybe we can see some more value once Fae Flight comes in, because that'll add a lot. But I mean, you can just see right now, the shots are just so inconsistent at this distance against their composition. Oh, well, it's going to be a seismic crash right now, setting up a couple kills. But it's actually going to be Stop Me that ends up losing his life. Sheepa kept alive through the worst of it. And what was 006 is now 01 and 06. A couple of kills are coming up in favor of Sour Team and at least starting off their defense in a way they want to. Andrew Doodle at least answers one back and is going to be a nuisance, kind of a thorn in their side. But this is that moment, especially on Timber Mill. I mean, this is probably one of the, I don't want to say easiest places to hold, but this last stretch, this last 50% is just wide open range. Yeah. And again, 
usually you'd think wide open range. Man, that's Strix's territory. Even without a sniper, that's really solid for Sour Team. The biggest thing is that it's easy for Sour Team to wrap behind the Strix and not let him get those special angles. But if OTP can get it to that last hill, that's where things I think are great for them. Because once you get it onto that ramp, it's so hard for the defense to hold it because every spawn is in the sightline from, from OTP. There's really no way for them to get out without being seen. And it looks like an engager with a... Oh! Come on, Antidudo! Come on! You saw the Temporal Divide. That's so unfortunate, but he still finds the kill. It intimidated Will Burton enough to make him back up, and once your Pony are still in control even after that. Looking to be able to find the kill on Uber's payday as well. They're chasing down this Eevee. They don't want her to get out. Gonna be able to blink away, and is just doing the dance to try and stay alive, but Sheba's getting melted right now. Does have his second chance, so he's gonna be able to stay through, but unfortunately, Debilitate will be back up pretty soon. Those Poison Bolts are on a low cooldown, so you're gonna have to play it careful. The Sniper at the angle he wants to be. The payload knocking on the door of Sour Team as they're just trying to hold on to anything and everything they can. And right now, they, they seem to have given themselves a little bit of pause to stop me falls back. And Nixus was able to back up without taking much damage. Defit here engaging on the high ground. Great, great setback to pull back Defit, but he's still safe and sound. They're, and are still contesting the point. She's very low, though. One trick pony have to convert this into Ooh. a kill soon. Defit being able to find that kill so solid. Stop me goes down, though. And with those two kills, it's going to be making this a lot more difficult. But well, that's a double kill from Nixus. He's down on the front line. Not where you expect your snipers to be. <laughs> but between him and Afuria, oh, they're just going to melt anyone and everyone that comes through. And I don't know what his slash line was at the very end. We'll see it as we come into the next round. But I mean, there's a point at the end of the mid fight, he was 4 0. Obviously, this sniper being uncontested is causing some troubles. Yeah, they need their Eevee to get onto him, but the map is so open, it's really hard for that to happen. Seven and one, 9k damage over the Willow. And the Willow has good damage, but how much of that is, and I, I don't like this term, but how much of that is like garbage damage? You know what I yeah. mean? Like damage that's not really seconds. able to be converted on anything because Ubers is getting pressured out from other angles. I really think OTP are going to be in control for this game. Triple DPS, I know Nick mentioned this like about a week ago. It scales better Three, into the late game. Two, so Sour Team one. not winning that first fight when their half shells online more, that's not a great sign for how this game's going to go. I think a lot of it is, uh, again, what you said last round, looking at maybe Uber's Pady, where he can go. No ult to his name, and he's 1-4 and four right now. But also this Faith Flight, and what maybe that can afford you. Of course, you want to get rid of Nixus before you go up into the sky and make yourself vulnerable. So they're going to have to try that as best they can as the shots are going to be coming through. And there's going to be the Inflame to ensure some of this damage. A nice hook on to stop me, but it's not going to be stopping Andrew Doodle, who this time is going to be able to get the ult off. And the bomb, while it might not find any kills, does still help him clean up William Birkin. Damage boosted Sky is so lethal. There's nothing that that Ancient Rage would have been able to do. Perdo diving to get to fit here, but running away, you're not going to be able to confirm through that damage reduction. And again, Willow struggling against these flankers. Perdo getting just chipped out by the Fury from high ground, and Defit does find that kill. So OTP don't have point control, but they could get back in to get that touch. Well, it's going to be 81% now as the clock is kind of tightening on One Trick Pony to get on here. Stop me going to be able to come in, get the touch, get some kills as well to take control back in favor of One Trick Pony. Ineffable trying to stay away, but that's a triple kill for Defit to keep things rolling. Looking for a fourth if he can find it, but Uber's Fady going to be just slippery enough to get out of here. Nice ice block. Going to keep him alive a little longer, but even on the back of that, not finding the fourth, still finds three and gives his team control. That's how you know you're against good players. You go to pressure as Maeve and you dash up into a double air shot from a Willow and an Eevee. You, that's that's got to feel uncomfortable. Nyx is finding Ubers here when he's trying to come into the point. Faveblight stuck in the ground, managing to get up. But, I, oh, they do get the touch at the last second. But Perdo has a long way to go to be able to get to shoot onto the point. He's going to get some angles. Finally has some damage on to stop me. And the Whirlwind pops as well, just to keep everyone alive. Maeve going to get exiled out of the sky. Shots are coming through to make sure that no one on One Trick Pony can be effective. But it's not going to be enough. Sheepa going to end up going down the wall a little too late to keep him going. Andrew Doodle, the saving grace for his team as overtime ticks down and One Trick Pony grab themselves a second Pela. This is one of those times where just picking the top tier characters isn't going to win you a game. Makoa, you see Makoa Atlas, you think, yeah. oh, we win, we win, GG. But against the composition that OTP bring with the tank shred and with the, just the distance they can keep, Atlas already gets countered by characters who can lay a lot of damage into him from a distance. Victor being one big one, being able to constantly put damage down and there's no way for them to get in other than Ubers and that's so much pressure on one Eevee, a character that's so squishy. Trade's going back and forth here, but it's not really much of anything. I mean, it's OTP, a sour team just dying for the cart. I was going to say, it's Andrew Doodle killing anyone who happens to stand in between <laughs> him and getting this payload in. It's really what I'm seeing. Soretz puts his name on the board as well, but... I mean, this Sky is tearing through everyone. And a lot of people know she does do a lot of damage. Percent damage is always going to be good for you. 
And this payload's walking up. A minute and a half left on the clock, but it's about 80% of the way through its push. And Sky is in the perfect position to capitalize on a little bit of a time bomb. Going to get thrown down and going to be able to zone a little bit. You're trying to dodge out, and everyone will, except for Sheepa, who is going to have to use the second chance. Falls back, stays alive for a little longer. The second chance, I mean, the time bomb doesn't get blocked by the Stasis Guild, so he gets his second chance force really early. So they're in a good position here to take this with Anja dropping, wrapping around the side. Seismic Crash coming in, too. They're going to find Will good. really quickly, which means this should go to OTP. Couple of follow-up kills. Sheepa doing his best to be able to set this through, and with a setback, he stalls it a little bit, but it's not going to be enough. One trick pony convert that one. They find themselves a 4-0 here on Timber Mill, and that the draft, the play style, everything oh, yeah. about it, to me, felt like a team that they chose Timber Mill for a very, very solid reason. It's because they, they know what they're doing. Yeah, and that draft, again, it was just played so well. The way they immediately knew to surround. DeFit also played fantastic. The first pick may have really paid off in dividends, I think, as that yeah. game went on. Mave is so strong on that map, and it wins the duel against Eevee. If you play it right, it will almost yeah. always win that fight. So getting that first gets you a huge advantage when flanks are so important on that map. And I think we saw that. I mean, there were several times when we, we turned to look at the slash line that Eevee had. It was, well, not quite the prettiest. And you can maybe see that reflected in the damage as well. Not often that you see Makoa and Eevee sub 40k. You know, although, I guess with how fast the game was, it's not too surprising. But the 80,000 damage, essentially, from Nixus, the 61k from DeFit, and the 75k from Andrew Doodle kind of speaks in uh, in loud terms as to what was happening. 11, 4, and 12, 9, 2, and 9. I mean, pretty much anybody on this team you could highlight. Yeah, and they all they all were positioned, I think, really well. Nixus, it, you, again, you cannot deal with an uncontested sniper on this map. There's a reason people don't usually pick this map or like playing this map, because if you lose in the draft, it really is a huge snowball. But I think a big thing about this, a big question about their draft was the sky, right? Yeah. How you can position on a map that's so vertical, so wide, but putting yourself in a place where you can shred the point, shred those tanks, not do that, but everything else in Sky is kidding. <laughs> I, I think they played it uh, to a T. And it's, again, just no vertical mobility, and that's one of the biggest things on here. Like, that's why Maeve, EV were the first couple of picks, is just how strong they can be. Sky's just good at killing tanks, and that's honestly one of the best things she has going forward. If you're going to let the two premier tanks through, I guess the best way to do it is to counter pick them as best you can. Again, One Trick Pony felt like they knew what they were doing every step of the way here and were able to maintain that control. They find themselves a 4-0, and, and that's a fantastic start against Sour Team. Yeah, especially the last set was so close, so if you can establish that first, get that momentum yeah. early, it could help things go your way. I think they came back after being down 2-0 last time, if I remember. But, yes. So they can reclaim momentum, but Sour Team, I don't know, they haven't been down too much. Yeah, it's one of those things. This is a team that knows what they're doing in Sour Team. They've been around for a while. Yeah. They've got a lot of veteran players who have been around the scene for a long time, so... Getting down is not really the worst case scenario for them, but it's definitely not the best case scenario for them either. So with one trick pony taking that 4-0, oh, we'll have to see whether or not they can kind of keep this on a roll or if maybe they run into a wall that is Sour Team. We'll find out more right after this. INAP, powering the control room for the Paladins Minor League. to the PML guys a quick game one in favor of OTP Timber Mill a map that wasn't really picked or really isn't seen because most of the time it's banned and you made a good point last time Nick about how normally the 
picks on Timber Mill are entirely decided. It's a map where you know what it is that you want to pick, and clearly OTP was ready for that. Yeah, and like you were mentioning, it's a map that is banned pretty frequently, or even sometimes like gentlemen's out of the set. Right, you know exactly. I mean? No yeah. one's going to ban it, but nobody's going to pick it either. Yeah. And you look at the way that this kind of went, and this is what we mean when we say polarizing. Sometimes it just looks like one team really knows what they want to do on Timber Mill, and the other right. team has kind of lost. Now, not to say that is exactly what happened here, but when you look at stuff like the late sky pick, letting both of those mm -hmm. you know, power tanks fall through to, uh, to Sour Team, you kind of get the sense that OTP had an idea of what they wanted to do here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the slash lines were all positive for their DPSs like Nixus, just the Strix, the Sky, the Maeve. All of them had such a pivotal role during that. It was hard for them to really try and contest the Strix. It's like, okay, they got the Strix. Now here comes Sky, really just tearing it up. Yeah. Almost, like, really just tearing up Makoa, and making it hard for that point fight to happen. Here comes Maeve, diving the back line, so Atlas has to worry about her True. too. So, I mean, it was just, they just had a really, really good draft. We're going to take a look at map two here to see what it is that both teams are going to decide to go for in this case which is stone keep interesting interesting pick certainly will be both teams do get their guarantee map pick so you have to imagine sour team will do a little bit better with their best foot forward mm -hmm. and this is more in the realm of you know maps you would expect to see on a pretty regular basis whereas timber mill is not so otp as long as they can hang in here maybe even get a win who knows for sure sour team Definitely one of the more solid teams in right. the EU PML, so don't judge them too harshly off of that right. performance on Turbo Mill. I still got I still got faith in my boy Shiba and Perdo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are definitely veteran players for sure. We saw some of their really just their power streaks, their mean streaks of MSI, how powerful they were as a as a team, a sour team when they had uh You're out of they time. had both Arrays and well not Arrays and Crunchy, which were both on Penta, but they did have a lot of players like they had Zerini on their yeah. on Sour team, who was a very powerful frontliner for them. But However, Atlas is first pick once again, but he's on Sour Team's side this time, so that's very interesting. Well, Sour Team's side again in this case. They said, man, the managed to ban the Torval, the Genos, the Makoa, the Barrack on OTP side as well, and Nar and Leon are both picked for them with Grover and Willow being uncovered, which I agree with the Grover more so on this map than I do for a. Uh, than I did on Timberville. Yeah, Timberville can be tough. Positioning on a place that's so wide open, mm. especially when your frontliners really don't have too much self-sustain on their Time own in McCullough or Atlas. Sun. They definitely need you to kind of be floating nearby. But I think given that they didn't try and pick, you the know, this super heavy back line composition with a bunch of people that needed to be babysat either, that gave them somewhat of an advantage. They'll be looking at Interesting. Perhaps a double support this time around, albeit one of them being Aww, Pip, look how hard more of an auxiliary trying. healer and a primary damage dealer, but nonetheless, double blaster. Triple blaster if you want to throw Ash into that conversation. Stay yeah. close and I see a lot of blast shields in the future of OTP. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, I'm, I, I do like the Willow. I do like the Pip on Sour Team. Sour running Where double. I mean, for me personally, going? it's harder to do that into Leon, but most times people are really trying to fight for keep. They're trying to vibe for that high ground yeah. potential. So I feel like earlier on in the game, it could be a little bit easier. The Drogo's pick on OT, OTP's team looks a little bit more rounded out, though. Yeah, I'll be honest. I feel, I feel better about OTP's draft in this one. I think yeah. if they use their ult, like, because you're right, Sour Team need that high ground, but if OTP are hitting their ultimates and getting all the value from them, I don't, I don't see them being bullied away. Right, yeah, I can understand that. Well, game two, here we go. Stone Keep, we're gonna throw it right down to our casters. Take us in, guys. Well, it's gonna be Stone Keep, and it's gonna be a 1-0 lead for One Trick Pony. And everyone's kind of leaning towards their draft right now, Kresnik. So I want to know, yep. do you do you vibe with the double blaster? Do you vibe with Sour Team here? Are you feeling One Trick Pony has a, a little bit of a leg up just in terms of draft? I think Winter Pony has a great church composition. I think playing on the outside is going to be really good for them. The the biggest thing is the, how much the Willow can do in terms of denying the heals. Because if they can get the Inara caught out when she's on the point with the rest of the team playing in church, it's going to be hard. But that means the Willow has to peek into this Leon and Drogos and actually get something done. So a lot of pressure on the Willow, I think, for Sour Team. And speaking of Drogos, he's going to kind of be free firing from up in the sky, isn't he? I mean, there's yeah. going to be, what, Atlas who can really hit him, hit scan. You, we've seen a few choice axes these last couple of days that have gone up, but not exactly the easiest target over here. So to fit, going to be able to, I think, control the skies and keep everything under wraps. Right now, it's going to be point control. That's a conversation. 39% picked up here for Sour Team, as far as it's 18% kind of contested slowly but surely there for One Trick Pony. Yeah, Defit has a is really going to be uncontested. 
it's going to be so hard for them. Unless they hit some crazy air shots with Willow and Pip. There's a lot here, but the fit holding above the doors, it's so hard for them to contest him. The Khan also locking them out, so they can't even get out to look at him. The healing from the Ying is going to be very helpful to keep this going, but Whirlwind actually is going to let them push in and try to get an Anja. They need to be able to peel for him, and it looks like they are. Just William Birkin shooting him now, kind of on an island, but he'll be able to second chance out safety. Andrew Doodle going to be coming through, but it's the fit right now looking for the Dragon Punch. Going to be flying around in a circle. 43 health, and he's he going to get the heal at the very tail end. Stays alive. He just got hit with the shoulder bash. Keeps everyone Why scared. Is dragon punching? <laughs> That was First Blood. We're two minutes in. First Blood finally comes through. 99% here for Sour Team as they're maintaining control. But ineffable William Birkin getting burned down. A nice shot to the air to fit. Going to be hitting that one out of the sky as Nyx is, is piling on the damage. Purdue, last man standing around the keep and finally burned down. Up in the sky, there's Sheepa. But uh, not too much to accomplish for him. He gets surrounded, isolated, burned down. And that 99% is going to be matched and surpassed here. No one should have the tap, the touch. Even it, the and tap one works trick too. pony, pony are going to be able to get this. Yeah, that pony, was on pony either way. <laughs> that was on the back of a great wall, I think, uh, from Doodle on the point to catch out Will when he was trying to pressure. That is, this is a really. I have angle. never seen that angle, ever in this game. That one's new for me. I've seen people do like one rocket from there and drop. I've never seen a consistent fight from there. Ineffable quickly finding Nixus here means that OTP are going to have to back up to fit still. He's, he's really going to... I want to see what his damage is going to be at the end of this game because it's going to be so hard for them to do anything to stop him. I don't even know if they're going to be able to kill him unless he can test for Dragon Punch like this. I mean, yeah, that Dragon Punch is coming up pretty often because of how much damage he's able to get. Finally, they burn down the Drogos, and they're going to be forcing the Whirlwind early on. It's going to have time to recharge, but it's going to be able to cause a little bit of a stall as right now Sour Team need the stall. A minute and a half left on the clock, and they're... 30% of the way through this push. Haven't hit the main choke point for Stone Keep just yet. And that's going to be a missed overpower coming down from Stop Me. So no free kill at the beginning of this round. And it's going to slow down the pace of it, I think, a little more for one trick one. I want to see Sour Team play a little bit on the fire side because I feel like the composition from OTP is going to be almost exclusively upper, where they're going to be kind of Drogo's up top. Nixus will probably go up there once they get around this corner. But Evil Mojo converting Doodle means they're going to have to back up here. They're pushing for the fit really hard, but. The distraction means Nixus can get Ineffable on the backside, so OTP are able to turn that even after getting the initial death. Nice little salvo to try and preempt anybody coming through, coming up on the archway, which is going to be the most difficult position here for One Trick Pony. But the problem is, uh, I would say actually for Sour Team, yep. the, this Drogos is more than likely going to be able to open this door since no one is really going to be looking to take him down. Ash might be able to find him because of the range right here but it is going to be his advantage. Faith Flight going to be going up into the air. I'm sorry, Illusory Rift going to be popped right there, keeping everything going. Sheepa going to be healed up, dashing back into the base, but the payload's moving. It's broken in, and now it's going to be in the courtyard. Yeah, no ultimates really that they want to use. Maybe assert dominance, but I think they can just get CC'd out of it. It's coming in, but gets shot down in the air by Nixus. So OTP convert this to a quick 2-0 lead, and man, this is, this is again a rough draft from Sour Team, I feel. And incredibly fast for yeah. them as well. I mean, that, that's one of those moments that Sour Team, you feel them calculating, okay, we have enough time to get this done. We have X, Y, Z. And uh, I think this dragon is getting a little out of hand. I agree. I mean, these, the dragon punches are are making a lot of pressure to, like, at least pull them back. They're trading with Sheepa. That's a lot of help out of the fight really quick. And he almost lived. He just barely got chipped out as he was running in that final corner. So, go to them. Yeah, we can see the damage stats very Oof. sided towards One Trick Pony. So, great start from them. Great draft. And also, the Grover... Is okay. Wait, is is it Ferocity or is it Rampant Blooming? I would assume Rampant Blooming. Okay, it's Ferocity. No, it's okay. going to be Ferocity. Yeah. So he's he's dealing the damage. Maybe not getting quite the heals. Of course, they have two sources of healing, so maybe that's what they're playing around as the fit trying to hit him there. Not going to be able to get the spit off. Dragon Punch charged up in the corner. Coming around, looking for anyone, everyone at he can. He's going to get Bordeaux. Can he get out with his life? No. As he gets taken down, a trade that's not going to work out, but that's 50% already for One Trick Pony. If they had collapsed, maybe they would have worked out a little better, but still even in One Trick Pony, you're still getting cap time. I want Sour Team to play outside. I think that's really important. They need to just give up this keep. It's not going to work for them. Evil Mojo on the point trying to convert onto Doodle, and they do, so it's a good flip, but Defit is back in and still laying down damage onto this back one. Defit just trying to shoot down, trying to get any amount of zone that he can for his team. Perdo locked in the corner. Can't do much against that one. The Dragon's going to be able to clean him up one 
one more time. And again, it's just a ball that keeps on rolling. Finally, 72% moving forward for one trick pony as Sour Team are trying to contest this. William Birkin doing whatever he can, but he's melted almost instantly after stepping on the objective. Willow in a bad spot. Uber Spady comes down right in front of the con. Stop me, stops him. And now they're just going to keep rolling forward. Ineffable's the next on the chopping block. Sheep is trying to do everything he can, trying to keep me kept alive by Purdue but it is going to be kill after kill here as one more contest from Jeep is going to keep things going. That is their dominance does prolong it. The question is, can it stop it? And so far, One Trick Pony are answering that with a resounding no. I can see why that stopped me as gamer tag because he just cannot be stopped. He's just walking straight in. It's a dare, not It is not a dare, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, I don't know, Sour Team, I wanted, again, I said this before, but they need to play outside. They, they can't just give all this ground to One Trick Pony because they're taking it and they're playing with it really well. Their draft is just too perfect to play out there. So they have to take, I think, a worse fight and maybe flip it with an ultimate, but they need to get to that next mid fight first. They're on a defense. William Burke and really low, barely getting safe. Look how far forward Sheep is. He's just overextended from the rest of his team, and now Sour Team are down 1-0. Ooh, defeat hitting him with the spit right there keeping things going forward for him. A good lockdown onto Purdue. He's gonna be able to keep this moving forward. Again, the payload definitely not hitting anywhere near as many snags as it did last round already. 50% of the way through, a minute 45 left on the clock to round this one out. And considering they were able to close it out pretty easily last time, they have a Dragon Punch, they have an Overpower, they have a Seismic Crash. Soon enough, they'll have an Illusory Rift. They have the tools in their arsenal right now. Sheepa was trying to dodge the Overpower and jumped off the map. I mean, he that's one way to dodging. It, it, it's true. He, he made it out of that alive. <laughs> Looks like Dragon Punch might swap this Mosquito out of the air if they let him in. And yes, he does. Flyswatter straight in. Only three people alive for Ooh. Sour Team. Ash is respawning, but I don't know if they're going to be able to contest. Another good Dragon Spit is going to be able to get at least a little bit of damage, but Defit has lost his life. They're going to lose a lot of blaster pressure from this one. It's going to be a minute left. And good Evil Mojo finds two, but they don't burn down Andrew Doodle or Stop Me. So both the front lines for one trick pony still contesting, still moving, and still getting some damage done. Yeah, the Inara is still contesting on the point. Atlas, the Stasis Field is down, so he should be able to go down really quickly, especially Ooh. when Nyx is coming back in, and he gets out alive. All that spam, because it was on Nyxus, didn't go anywhere else, so all that space is being taken. They're trying to contest everything and anything they can. Purdue almost goes down, makes it into the base to be able to get the healing over speedy. One rocket away from death, and it does connect to Fit. Going to be able to seal the deal there. Sheepa goes down, the payload moves forward, and one trick pony find themselves one game away now from closing out this set, and... That was just really, really well executed all yeah. around from One Trick Pony. That's two great drafts and great ways to play them in a row from OTP. At Sour Team, we always talked about how whenever they would do a draft, they would start with something weird and we'd be like, come on, Sour Team. <laughs> and then they would just make it work perfect yeah. immediately. And th these are comps that they did double blaster twice in a row. It's not working. They have to change something. But still, I don't want to take away from OTP. Yeah, I think, I think that map great. there's a lot that comes down to Obviously, I think Sheepa's... Overpowered dodge is what I'll call it. It's a, a unique maneuver <laughs> that we saw today. Did not quite work for him jumping off the map. Kind of accomplishes the same goal as it turns out is what the overpower was trying to do in the first place. And so that death, unfortunately, is going to be added up there and kind of burned into my memory. So I feel bad. But 0-10 there for the Ash, which is uh, definitely not the look you want. I mean, sometimes that's just the Ash life. It really is. Like You can go in and make room, but we saw how just, I, I think Sour Team are playing in a bad mental state because you saw that one moment when he was on the cart ahead of his entire team on his shield and nobody yeah. was coming in. He was just completely ahead of them. So he was making room, but I don't know if it was what they needed. Well, you have two members going 10-3, 10-3, 10 for Nixus, but of course one better. 10-3 and 11 here for Defit being able to impact just one more kill gives him, I guess, technically MVP of the game as it comes through. Of course, a little bit of an easier job as well, kind of flying around in the sky with no one looking at him too often. A lot of angles like this that he was able to kind of play through, get the dragon punch. Of course, that nice one through, I'm just going to have to say, I guess the bell tower was where he was, kind of hovering really yeah. far up in the skybox to find some interesting shots. Yeah, I like this one too. I, I love the I love the fly swatter here, knocking the uh, knocking Uber's payday straight out of the sky. And I mean, he negated alts twice in a row. He got the Fey Flight with that one. He got the Whirlwind with the last one. So he was always finding the right targets in those punches. So this is a punch that can kill any tank. Not my punch, but, oh, sorry. but you, Dragon you were, Punch. You were putting your fist up. I thought you were coming in for me. Dragon Punch can can eliminate any tank. That's like an Inara. Yes. That, that's a, a Makoa, even in Ancient Rage. So that's t up to 10,000 HP and he used it on Willow. I'm pretty sure she got punched into another universe. We'll have to see if we can find her in any of the future games today as it comes through, but that is it. 2-0 right now. We'll see if they can close it out one more as One Trick Pony try to win the next map.
Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Paladins Minor League. to the PML guys thank you for staying with us unfortunately we're still looking for the shattered remains of that willow after stone keep gore I do appreciate you keeping an eye out for her as well fight on brave soldier OTP up 2-0 against sour team unfortunately and it seems like they have a sort of control that's really really hard to break sour team can't find their opening yeah that was uh that was a rough one to watch for sure you're looking at a couple of uh lackings in the draft mm -hmm. i think especially right. going to, going this double blaster style the on top of mega potion ferocity grover it's it's not it's tried i wouldn't say it's <laughs> tested yet uh, and sour team we're not able to pull that one off the fit obviously having a big big problem to do with it you have a couple of things right. on paper but right if atlas has to do anything else and this drogos has just free reign in the skies and he's completely uncontested and i think we saw that leon as well nobody to dive her no real flank pressure big kind of slow floaty characters right, like willow exactly. and pip very easy for her to just pin those to the wall and you get those double 10 and three back yeah. line slash lines from uh, OTP. Oh yeah, and on the flip side of that, the zero and 10, zero and six slash yeah. lines for Sour Team once again, very the unfortunate. Finish duo, O oh, for 16 yeah, right? on Stone Keep, <laughs> that's tough. Very, very tough. Big sad all in the chat. Map three coming up soon on this screen here. Gonna see exactly what it is that they have in store for us. Bright Marsh will be very, very interesting. Now, damn, th they really about to get O 12 <laughs> I hope not. Whew. I really hope not. Come on, Sour Team. I believe in them. Well, Bright Marsh is their last chance to dance here. OTP out for blood today. Standings, 100%. like we said, have been close. Sour Team are tied for first at the moment. So technically, this is an upset. This is kind of a big 100%. deal what's yeah. happening here in the minor league. Yeah, I mean, the third seed in this case, OTP, being the ones that are overcoming sour team in this case like you had said they are fighting for first place in this case and if otp actually manages to hit them with the young 12-0 only is that going to put stranger. a detriment on their record it's going to feel sour team a little bit shook after that they decided to lock the anara first though which i do understand atlas khan being hovered on the other side they are opting to go for it i would believe especially on a map like dry marsh you want to be able to control most of those spaces those apartments and divider can cover most yeah. of where those fights are happening well, it's definitely worth noting for Sour Team, something we haven't touched on yet, but Ninu not with the squad today. Good point, good point. So, definitely keeping an eye. Obviously, haven't heard anything official about where he is or keep where he may be going, so we'll have to just keep an eye out and wish him the best. Sour Team certainly uh, looking worse for wear My without him. Nara, Ruckus, Willow locked in for them. Ruckus, again, something uh, not exactly flavor of the month right now, but you do see him in those niche scenarios uh, when you have particular players that enjoy the character. OTP no, still no. responding, <laughs> uh, I mean, with absolute Shipping bangers. No other yeah. way to put it. Yeah. Atlas Khan, Cassie Genos through the first four. This is this is going to be tough stuff to deal with, man. I, I don't know. Again, it's not bad what Get Sour Team are picking, but it's just better, I feel, from OTP. It's yeah, nice. I mean, <laughs> their drafts so have been so on point. It is so difficult to try and combat that because it's like Sour Team has been picking – these picks they've been going alice mccoy they've been going they, they they've been taking the stuff it is that's mostly open but we see otp has had an answer from both of their drafts on stone keep and on the previous map well not on timber mills and now they have the drogos this is going to be big be game you got difficult. big game luminary against everyone except willow is right stupid easy to hit with a disengage mm -hmm. i don't know man i think i think that's over 
Yeah, maybe. Maybe. We'll have to see. Time of death, 40 minutes in. <laughs> we'll have to see. Game three, OTP versus Sour Team. Take it away for us, casters. Well, Nick's already calling it as the time of death. Sour Team getting 3 0 here. But we've seen them in this position before. Backs against the wall. They do fight back. But I will say, as maps go to increasingly, I guess, easier maps to 4 0 on, you yeah. start off on Timber Mill, which I would argue is normally like a 4 3. Stone Keep, I would argue 4 1 4 2. Then you get to Bright Marsh, and it's like, okay, this is a 4 0 map. So this is a dangerous territory to be going to. Yeah, and OTP, we've seen how well they've executed their drafts until now, and I, I think this is another execution-based map where they're going to have to play outside because, Sour Team, uh, you're not touching the point. If you're, again, if you're OTP, you're not touching the point. Willow, Tyra, Inara, yeah. you're not even getting close, or at least trying to. So OTP, they're going to have to play outside. They're going to have to find some picks there early. And, I mean, the only person contesting them is going to be Sheep on Ruckus. So it, it could be an easy push if they find it. Do it the good old-fashioned way. Kill him dead, and then take control of the objective. That's going to be the goal. Sheep, though, right now locked away. Emitter Shield goes down. He backs off. And that's going to be some good apartment control coming down from One Trick Pony. Unfortunately, they are losing where it matters most. 51% already on the objective here for Sour Team on the mid. But William Birkin's been taking a considerable amount of poke, forced to fall back. So One Trick Pony are, are keeping the pressure alive. And the Tyro's the one contesting the Drogos for Sour Team. And I don't know if that's the best option. They really don't have another, though. Maybe they could have the Ruckus shooting him, too. But Tyro doesn't do enough long-range damage. Perdo's not going to be able to find those confirms. 81% still on the objective for Sour Team, but OTP, they're looking to retake it. A couple of good shots here. Sheepa trying to seal the deal. But unfortunately, it looks like the deal might be sealed on him. His Minter Shield goes up. He runs away. And as of right now, again, stays alive to see another day. I don't believe any crazy first blood has happened just yet. It's 90% here for Sour Team closing up. So William Birkin runs away from the objective. One Trick Pony at 21, so they're going to have to play catch up for a majority of the round. But they are fighting at the best ability they have. Right now, they're just trying to play control. Finally, first blood comes through. Stop me goes down, and that's going to turn this into a 4v5 and crossfire box. Ultimate's coming in real quick, too. Faith Flight also on top. Onto Doodle just dying on the point very quickly. So, quick swing for Sour Team. They pulled back. They did what they had to. They just won that poke war anytime they tried to come in. Amazing, I think, honestly, on the Inara for being able to get off the point alive as much as she did. She was constantly getting focused and got out with, Will got out with like a thousand HP, I think, three times. Yeah, there were uh, countless times with just walking away from the objective. And it's still under fire, still under duress. Like, yeah. it's not like, oh, yeah, they just stopped paying attention to him. It's like, no, he just had to recognize, okay, if I leave now, I'll still live when I pass through the doorway. Kind of keeps him going. And the one thing that hasn't been screaming, I think, as loud to me as I expected it to is so far Big Game Cassie kind of having a quieter game overall than, than what I expected to see out of her. I think they're just focusing Nixus whenever he's peeking. They're making it really hard for him to get anything done. Uh, he's probably going to push down main. Maybe oh, he doesn't need to get the Inara here. Marks are anyway just to get the kill faster so they can push up. But quick overpower through time and space, finding Perdo there in the back. So a quick swing from One Trick Pony there. But they're just going to have to get an aggressive zone. I don't know if it's going to get them too much. We got zero to three real fast. Now they're going to go for the full press defense, try to get as far in the face of Sour Team as they physically can <laughs> to stop them. And they ideally get some more kills at this angle kind of 25% of the way out of the base of Sour Teams now. They're going to be pushing back towards the mid-fight. Seismic Crash came through, didn't really accomplish, I think, the, as much as he wanted to. It hit the stasis field. Hit the stasis field. Yeah, Again. that's... Yeah, I mean... I, uh, I think we're going to have to lo start logging all of the <laughs> ults today that have gone through stasis field and, and stopped. I wish there was a way for us to track that. That'd be that'd be sick, but... I mean, well, also, I've, I've counted two. The two. Okay, you're right, you're right. We saw earlier... um. On that mid-fight, actually, Perdo's Firebomb got hit by the very edge of it. So we're seeing a lot of value from that stasis field. It is a mechanic that you really don't see anywhere else. There's nothing else that denies ultimates the same way that it does. And as players are getting more used to Atlas, they're getting used to having it up at the timings for these ultimates. You know, they're tracking that mental timing a little more. Being able to find it in the right spot at the right time. Kind of keep it going. So the fit goes right around the loneliest house on Bright Marsh. Fay Flight's going to be popped up, trying to consider what he can in the sky and seal the deal. 30 seconds left on the clock as we're coming around the last corner of Bright Marsh. Dragon Punch going for the Mosquito Swat, as you called it, but he's not going to be able to find it. Instead, takes a ton of damage, does make it out alive. Well, at least for a little bit to fit. Taken down just over his base. Now Stop Me getting burned down, or Andrew Doodle getting burned down. Stop Me trying to do whatever he can to stop this from happening, but the Stasis Field is not going to be enough to stop the pinch coming down from Sour Team. Once they burn him down, this payload's moving forward, and it's looking like it's a conversion. 
That was a great cooldown usage, actually, from the Atlas. Stopped me living a lot longer than he should have. Perfectly timed step back there, but this was that Fae Flight, I think, that was popped at the same time to kind of initiate here. The Genos caught out after Nyx is going down. He was basically the last line of defense once Doodle went down, so great pressure there by the end of that mid-fight. Good use of their ultimates, but all economy-wise here, we have, let's see, Scout through time and space and Exile. Not really super influential ultimates. Ma Scout is great to start a fight, but the only combo they really have is perfectly timing and Exile with a, with a through time and space, and that's a, that's a hard one to set up. It's definitely not the uh, the easiest timing no. <laughs> in their favor. <laughs> Although, after yesterday, where, what was it? It was... Two. The the terminus got the terminus time and space and into the yeah the reanimate into a through time and space that connects just before the overpower comes through. It was just such a, a unique sequence of ults to come through. We'll have to see if through time and space can do anything here. Good shot comes out, does clip Sheepa, but it's not going to be able to save Nix. It's not going to be able to save Stop Me, and it's not going to be able to save Andrew Doodle but right now. Is going to be able to commanders grab Sheepa, which actually ends up holding him in place. That's a four man wipe on the side of one trick pony as Sour Team just move in. They make this mid-fight their home, and they're perfectly happy. This is what I wanted to see from Tower Sour Team from the start. They weren't adapting, I think, on the first two maps. That first mid on this map, they played very defensive, I think pulled back. This mid, they just played in their face. They went super aggressive, and that change of pace completely caught OTP off guard. I don't even know with how cleanly that fight was won if they're going to have a chance to retouch without throwing a tank's life away. Well, there's going to be the overpower trying to do anything and everything they can. They get rid of Sheepa, and while well, Stop Me runs, well, right into a wall. He does get stopped this time around. Is that what happens when and an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? <laughs> the immovable object just happens to be a narwhal. Well, that's all they needed on Sour Team's side. They're up 3-0 now on Bright Marsh, and the kills are still coming out. Andrew Doodle goes down. You have so many health bars. Well, just one health bar on Nixus. Incredibly low. There goes Soretz. And with a few more kills, this payload's smooth rolling so far. Yeah, Sour Team, they're playing a lot more confident now. Their ultimates are getting used together. They're moving in with that. Again, just like the fact that they changed that up already says to me that they're playing like a different team now. They're playing like the Sour Team we're used to seeing, and that's even without Nino. And that's, I think, the biggest surprise. I mean, this is, you know, a roster change coming in, technically a little late for them in the split. I mean, not too, too late. I guess four weeks yeah. in, but not one they expected one to have in. happen so, so often, right? And so, I mean, of all the teams we've seen, like Europe has, has been kind of plagued with these changes, but Fae Flight gonna be popped right now. They're looking to try and close this out as soon as they can, but Dragon Punch in response. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna be able to find the Whirlwind again. Always to fit finding ultimate canceling value with the Dragon Punch. He's gonna have to hide though. He's in the opening angle for the Tyra, but let's get away from the roof again. Tyra not having that long range confirmable damage to be able to catch the Drogos when he's that far away. Luckily for One Trick Pony and any fans they might have, they keep themselves alive in this game, at least for now. They still have a minute left to burn on the clock to stop Sour Team fully. And they, uh, they commit, I think, a few ultimates over there. Scout, you can shrug off, but it is the Dragon Punch that comes through. A lot of good shots, though, a lot of good damage that comes down from them. And not exactly the prettiest slash lines, really, for anybody other than Sheepa, I guess, Perdo, Uber Spady. So yeah. three, you know, out of the ten, but when they're all stacked on one team, it does pretty well overall. The 7 2 and 8 Tyra right now definitely leading the way. But Hexafire charged up. Crossfire nowhere nearby. Faith Light already popped. So they have some potential to close this out, but. Nothing big. I really like how they're playing this Ruckus. I mean, they're playing him kind of as a dive champion, but when they're not looking for the dive, he's so patient. He's looking for these kills. And this is the opposite of patient, I guess, walking in with the Hexafire. Quick response, immediate through time and space with fire. That was an immediate, that was a really, really fast turn. But Seismic Crash coming in, I think they still want to keep this going, Sour Team does. Going to be continuing the push as best they can. Stop me looking to get killed off one more time. And now there's no ta no taint contesting it. Zaretz jumps down from the high ground to try and hold on, but he is just a step too late. The same thing for the Cassie, the same thing for the Drogas as they all just individually plop down around the payload. And it would have been a contest if it was a little bit sooner, but Sour Team wins the time game. That's one of the reasons why it's such a snowball-y map. Bright Marsh, you know, when the tanks, they're the only ones on the ground, everyone else is up top, which yeah. means the tanks are the only people you have to focus. You get them down and the squishies really can't fight the cart once it gets to that point. And outside of Sky earlier, I think the best person in the game to focus down any individual tanks is going yeah. to be Tyra, oh, <laughs> yeah. who's going to be there. That Hunter's Mark does a lot to kind of award and warrant the damage. Of course, we saw her slash line was very gorgeous going into that last fight, and I'm assuming it stayed the same. 62,000 damage top, well, not quite top damage in the game for Perdue, beat out there by Nixus by whew, a whopping 15,000. But it's still not enough to make the difference there for One Trick Pony. The kills just weren't really coming through.
Yeah, the damage against a Grover comp is going to be a little stacked just because you're constantly getting damage, constantly yeah. getting healed. People feel like they can fight a little bit more. But Sour Team, again, surprising that Perdo is top damage. Usually when you see a Tyra on a team, you're not expecting them to be top because they're more enabling everybody else. Yeah. And this is the second time in a row, I think we saw it yesterday as well, where the Tyra really just takes control of the game, takes hold, those marks, and their own damage bringing extra value that you'd be expecting from that character. Digs their heels in, keeps on moving forward. Uber's Payday, though, going to be able to do just as much. 6-1 and 11, a lot of good things coming down from the damage duo on Sour Team. Sheepa putting his name on the list. We'll scratch off that last Hexafire that came through and just remember the rest of it. The 5-3 and 7 Ruckus had a, a lot of effect. And like you were saying, I mean, the ability to bring this composition in and play it in kind of two styles. The first yeah. round was very passive. We're going to sit around, just put William Birkin on the point and hope for the best. The second round was, OK, we're just going to kill you as fast as we physically can and hope for the best out of that, which usually it does lead to some, su some success. Uh, but we're going to be looking here at Tyra 8, 2, and 9. Perdo was the driving force in this team. Yeah, this was that early engage, too, with the crossfire walking straight in, Surrett's going down, too. Perdo was able to slow down to fit on the Drogos, too. And I, I was mentioning how hard that is for a tire to do, but being able to get that burst timing so you don't have all that spread, being able to have the mark up with that cooldown management, really great from Perdo. Again, those, those skills at range, like, you have to be positioned really well to do that as a Tyra. I just feel like Sour Team function best when they're about to lose a set. I feel like I just... They either to see it, they right. either get themselves off like they they start off like they're running well, I guess poorly running a marathon yeah. and they sprint as far as they can to get ahead and then they just win, or they start off two zero and then they're like all right long con we've got this one, uh, and it's just remarkable to see them come from behind almost every single yeah. time. But as of right now, it's only two one. Yeah, it's cool to be clutch, but you don't want to be the team that's like, we only win when we're about to lose. <laughs> we only have five game sets. Well, we'll have to see whether or not they can keep this one alive again. They are down two to one right now. So one trick pony only need one more game to seal the deal. We'll see if they can do it right after this. Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Paladins Minor League. Back to the PML guys. Sour team catching their first win with the reverse 4-0 boink on their side. 1-2 to two currently. Bright Marsh being a very convincing 4-0 too. You would have almost thought that this yeah, is how they would have tried to set. start. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like You would have thought that this is how they should have started the set, really, in this case. This could be the quickest five-game set there's ever been. <laughs> right? just 4-0 <laughs> each other back and forth until we have a winner. Right, exactly. I mean, like the, just the play coming out from from all of them was so efficient. I feel like the tire, Agora put it perfectly. I feel like Perdo was the driving force, that hunting party, those marks it was that he was able to put out. Bright Marsh, there's not a lot of room to really move around and really go from. Really the only high ground sort of elevated position are the ones really right next to the point and then yeah. in people's spawns. So it's hard for you to really be able to maneuver how you want to, especially on that map against like Willow Tyra. Like that's really hard to be able to escape. Yeah, obviously Inara dominated on the objective. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, there wasn't like any particular moment or one right, yeah, true. thing that I would say kept going wrong for OTP. I, I think Sour Team just beat him. I'm watching all these fights yeah. after fights, and I'm like, hey, you know, it's really nothing super special. Sour Team mm -hmm. are just getting out there, and they're just winning. Yeah, I mean, well, they've definitely picked up the pace. We're going to see what we have for game four. The map shall be... Fish market. Interesting. That's another market you don't really see people try and opt for willingly. Most of the time it is banned. Yeah, this is going to be OTP trying to maybe do a little bit of what they did on Timber Mill in terms of catching uh, Sour Team off guard. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Now, again, this is not quite on the end of the spectrum that Timber Mill is. Right. They're going to be first pick here. They're going to get rid of Ash first. How you do this map is largely up in the air. I think Envy have a pretty good strategy mm -hmm. figured out. I think they have a pretty good reputation on this map as well. All for, all the frontliners are gone, basically. So all now, <laughs> things uh, a little bit more interesting here. What's yeah. going to be prioritized as first pick? Only pack Didn't work out for them on Bright Marsh, but they are going to run back to Genos. You know, they do want to lock that luminary buff. That damage buff is going to play a lot, especially when you have some of these certain important frontliners. However, what they did lose. They locked standing. Genos first, but they left open Barrick. Atlas. Not only is that something you don't see, but that's something that's extremely terrifying that can be on a map We're like Fishmark. We're only getting started. So I guess you have Terminus, Fernando, and Ruckus left. Yeah. If you want any of those. If you had to solo one of those, I guess you would do Fernando. Fernando. It would have to be Fernando. And it's not ideal, but he'll do okay. He's a decent pairing with Genos because he's a lot of self-sustain. But obviously... Welcome I'm probably picking it last Sweet at this Kippen. point, unless you want... Yeah, you got to pretty much just pick it last at yeah, this you point. OTP, to. have to win the game by other means. Right now, Sour Team have a great response. They go Eevee Mave and Man. the anti-flank champion you die. is there locked is no in. Middle ground. Yeah, that's extremely difficult. It's looking already really tough Spirits. for Sour Team in terms Spirits. of their draft. Barry, Atlas, Leon, Maldamba, you put it perfectly. That anti-flank Leon, just her being literally her. Like her being able to have both of those auto lock Oh, Anar! Oh, Anar! Duh. Little brain fart. And I'm still Sorry, my brain was lagging. My brain was play. lagging. I apologize for that one. Apologize. Well, AOL startup noise. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah. the latency was a little bit too high on my brain. I apologize. Anara was still left open. Kinesa is locked as well. They look. They are looking for the Shaolin. They're hovering it. I can imagine they will lock it, which would be really Your interesting. Fails you. Okay, I can. I I can see this. I, I can see this happening. Shaolin, with Explosive Arrow at the very least, um, actually has really, really good bursts. So he'd mm. be able to Explosive Arrow into one planet shot and be able to deal with Maven Eevee fairly effectively, True. as well as having the range to contest Kinesa. And, you know, obviously not toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but, you know, he's going to be able to land shots. He'll be effective at long, long distances. If Sour Team played his back line right, I know they got the better oh, front yeah. line. Yeah, 100%. We'll have to see what they have in store for us on Game 4. Casters, take it away. Barrick and Atlas going up against the triple DPS. Anara going to be standing on the objective. I actually, have, I think, can't remember, it was sometime last week. I, I dove into why I love Barrick on this map so much. We'll have to see if Sour Team can let him stand up to it. It is a treat today that we get to start with Timber Mill. We get Fish Market all in one set. Is it that a just treat? Makes, uh, yeah, no, I love these maps I, because maybe, I don't see them so much. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe about, maybe because you don't, you have to play them as much at like scrims and stuff like that. But oh those yeah, that were, might be it. Whew, those fish, every time fish market comes up in a scrim, I, I'm I feel like, I feel like Kanga. Like just I can feel them like slamming their fists <laughs> on their desk right now. I have no idea why, but it's just someone mentioned fish market, and now that I've done it again, there's another little bit of anger as they come through. It's just a disturbance. You feel that throughout the, the universe, ground we're shaking, them. Gore. It's no, a it's a it's a fun map. I like fish. I was hoping for the quad DPS. I'm gonna be honest. I was really hoping for the quad DPS when they had those first three locks. When they got that Kinesa last hover, I was like, ooh, we're going back some some season two splice. I wanted to see that. Uh, I wanted to see that coming out. But Inara, probably a much better run. fit when you need to get this point contestant, especially against a Barrack, who you said is good on this map. Yeah, I th I just think he fits the role incredibly well. He gets his healing from his turrets. They get to sit in a safe place. He has a barricade. He's a happy boy when he stands on the point. You can see he's already down there. William Birkin moving in and garnishing already 21% in this fight. As Hooper's payday is incredibly low, getting kind of attacked and focused out. The double flank from One Trick Pony trying to keep him controlled, corralled. And while they are doing that much, Sour Team hasn't really been able to escape this one corner. Nixus is going to be able to pick off one Sheepa with the sniper shot. Atlas is going to struggle into triple DPS. He 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 needs to get in before his value is really Ooh. there. And triple DPS again, you're going to get surrounded, you're going to get zoned, and that's where you're going to get slowed down. You know, Atlas, that's where he's going to struggle in those situations. And Kinesa especially is going to put in a lot of damage for get in. Wow, great pick by Nexus onto Uber's Petty on that side, which is going to make this point go to the TP. A lot of good angles and a lot of good shots that are coming down. They're going to be just clean, essentially zero to a hundred once they get Sour Team William Burke and they kind of kick him off of the point and get they just. Step onto it, they move in, they make it their own home. Now the shots are going to be good. Barricade trying to hold up around the corner here and, and slow this down, but Fish Market, this is one of the most 
I want to say notorious pushes in the game where it gets difficult because you have to go uphill then downhill, yeah. right? It opens up into kind of a fishbowl, as you could have guessed from part of the name. But either way, with the way Nixus is playing, with the way Defit's playing right now, you just have lockdown on everybody on Tower Team. The thing about this point is it's so hard for the offense, and then immediately it's so hard for the defense. Like, the top of that hill is the perfect tipping point of just almost impossible for either side, and it's looking good for OTP once they get over this, if they can get through the Atlas. This Knessa definitely being able to buy their weight in gold right now with how much they've been able to afford in space. It's just been perfect for them. A lot of pressure from Andrew Doodle on the side as well, kind of bringing back his blaster roots in this EV, keeping Purdue slightly in check. A lot of these shots just kind of going back and forth between the two of them, not connecting. A thousand damage there on who Stop me. He's going to be trying to stay alive, but it looks like he's going to get burned down. He's so close, and they do get rid of him. So without the Inara, we'll have to see, can this triple DPS keep and maintain this amount of control? Inara with Genos, they have to no, walk in. They like, answered immediately. <laughs> when, when Inara is that, at that point, with the Genos pocket, you have to go in. You have to make something happen. And Nora with Genos is basically just a timer that's ticking down because you'll never keep her alive through all the damage pressure. So once she's behind the wall, both tanks are focusing on her. They really had to pounce, but if, if the DPSs are too far back for Sour Team, the flanks on OTP really can't pounce. I mean, Maeve can. Yeah. Once, well, twice after literally. bad lives, but... You know, but they won't be able to follow up and get those kills if they keep their distance. Well, they have a three time in space ready if they want to be able to go through. They're actually going to sneeze on them as the Ice Storm comes out, being able to create a little bit of space. Again, corralling as much of Sour Team as they can, putting them into the position they want them to be. Andrew Doodle going to get set back. Ice Block keeps them alive for a little bit longer. And they're just trying to keep this payload moving, but right now being contested, no one being able to step on it. And Nanara is about three fourths of her health bar, and like you said, it's kind of just a timeline. As we see it get chunked down, they need more kills, but Nixus to fit, taken down. Stop me, looking to be the next one who's going to be burned through. And with all of that, we just don't have the pressure to keep this going. Great play by Perdo. It's a lot of pressure on him against this composition, I think. Shaw's great against DPSs, because one arrow is half of their health bar. It, it really is a huge chunk taken out. It's, it's even more than half against these flankers. It does yeah. get to the Maeve's DR, but she'll still get two shots. So good on him to be top in the damage charts. William Birkin for his team, not too far behind. But the three DPS is getting Genos pocketed. They're up there for one trick pony. They just have to find a way to get a kill on that last hill. So I want to ask, what can Sour Team do around the point fight? Last time, they, they were pretty much locked in. I guess dockside, right? There, there was nowhere for them to go. Every time they tried to take a step away, they either got hit by Nixus or they got hit by Andrew Doodle or they got hit by Defit. Like there was just nowhere that felt safe for them. How do they adjust to that? I think they have to play market side because they have to play away from the sniper sight line from spawn that Nixus can take. And I think playing together was the right move. I, they have to move as a unit and be able to heal each other and peel for each other. That's how you play against the chaos comp on this map. That's how you used to play against quad DPS. You would just two tank death ball, hug each other pray that you can get through the stormy night well enlightenment was popped and i honestly don't understand why maybe to stop some damage coming through but william birkin burned down almost immediately in this round so alts that were thrown out maybe not finding what they needed good shots good kills one trick pony take down three looking to find four here as perdo uber's payday all five even have just committed <sighs> Sapuku on the point. They just <laughs> jumped on it. Like it, this, everyone trying to stop a grenade from happening, and then none of them actually stopped the grenade, and instead just gave up all of the control to One Trick Pony. Now it's 78% and rising. Oh, unfortunate. The wormhole didn't come into the last second, so they did catch onto Doodle. But look how far away they are. Fish Market's a big map. If you get those dismounts, there's really no way to get back in. That's why Ruckus used to be such a dominant force on this map. There's a sideline of the enemy spawn. If you're spraying 200 bullets at it, it's going to be tough to get through. They try to engage, but the time and space does not find what it needs to. I mean, I'm still lost in what Sour Team were trying to accomplish in the point fight. I haven't even <laughs> moved on past that. But One Trick Pony are up 2-1 right now as they grab the second mid and continue to push forward. There's going to be a good little stasis field stopping some aggression, but not enough as Stop Me is still going to be able to find a kill. And a good shot again from Nixus keeps things rolling through. A headshot there gets rid of Sheepa. And you had said that it's on not, well, I would say virtually impossible. Very difficult push yeah. at the beginning for the offense. And uh, it definitely is starting off perfect for one trick pony for a second time. Yeah, and they keep getting to that point. Andre trading, but Uber's Petty, that's a decent amount of range damage, at least consistent range damage that's out of the fight. If they can get on Perdot now, they can make this a lot easier for themselves. But they're playing on the other side, more pushing out the Atlas than anything. But the Barrack having to disengage from the point means they could engage. They have a lot of cap pressure to force them in. 
Couple of good shots healing coming up. Definitely going to favor Sour Team in this instance, but Defit gonna get aggressive, gonna get a lot of good damage. Midnight gonna be popped, and that's going to be the go button as of right now. Good damage onto Uber Speedy, and they're gonna be able to burn him down with the help of the Seismic Crash. They're now looking at Sheepa to be able to come through, but some good Exiles gets three, and now he's waiting, charging up the shot, finds the shot on Defit, and because of Perdo, they'll be able to clean it up. So that's three down on the side of One Trick Pony. No one to help out this Inara. And so stop me, once again, going to get burned down. A nice little setback just to stagger this out even further and make sure she goes down. Everyone's respawned. They're probably hitting around the midpoint right now, and Anara is going to die. I was, like, I was just letting it play out. I, I, I wasn't going to talk over that, but... Wow, that was a crazy stagger by them. And honestly, that was one of the more game-changing exiles I've seen, at least in the middle yeah. of a fight. Usually when you see an exile really get value, it's to stop someone from touching the objective. But exile, all three DPSs basically in a row, no damage coming in. Now Sour Team can resettle, and they found the picks immediately after they came out of it. That's the weakness of having such a squishy composition. If you get CC'd in any way, shape, or form, you're not getting out of it most likely unless you bought Brazil 3. Well, you said it earlier, it's a long map, and so with those exiles, with those kills, they stalled it down to now six, five seconds left on the clock before overtime comes through. And they burn down Stop Me almost immediately. That's going to be a great start to the fight. And now they're going to be able to find some control. They don't need any more than that. In fact, they even lost their support, but it wasn't enough. So keeping it 2-2 as of right now, Sour Team staying alive. And that was just well played again. The exiles, the timing afterward to find all the kills. It was three shots from Sheepa, followed by three kills immediately from the team. And One Trick Pony has the point fight down. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the dangerous thing right now. They haven't figured out the, the conversion. Point They're point in position to be seconds. able to try and find that win, but Sour Team have not had really any semblance of fight on either of these mids. Yeah, I mean, if, when you're drafting, if you have the comp that wins mid, you feel good uh, going into the game, because if four, it goes 4-3, three, three, you're, you're two, good. You win. Yeah. Like, if you're at a 3-3 three, three point fight and you have the better mid fight composition, you win. And triple DPS scales a little bit better into the late game. I noticed lots of resilience has picked up on Sour Team. That's basically just to deal with the Midnight. Seismic Crash, kind of, but Midnight's what's really important, because it's such a just fight opener for what you're calling. 9-3 there for Purdue. Kind of the only especially outrageously positive slash line on Sour Team, but really the one leading the way. There's going to be another one to his name as he finds the kill on Andrew Doodle. But he's the one making making strides right now. I feel like you get rid of him, potentially you open up the door to continue your success. Nice shot on to support here. Good headshot from Dixus. I mean, this sniper has been playing such a huge role, gets rid of Ineffable, and keeps things rolling forward for him. That's why steady aim is so good. You don't need to worry about those headshots. Sometimes could be a little inconsistent. Able to find that pick on the Dom, but because of it solely, wow, very low dome shield. He void grip forces out the dash, so his sustain's gonna be a lot lower on the point once once your pony refights. this. Ice Block gonna come through, actually finds the trade to fit, saving out Andrew Doodle right there with daggers at the right moment. They get rid of Sheepa, and even though that was 78% there for Sour Team, they dumped a couple of volts into keeping that alive. And ultimately, it did not work out. Dome Shield going to be down, but they still have the Dread Servant. They still have Heat Haze. Two of those, especially in tandem, can seal the deal. And the Exile's coming up. It's really something you said, maybe not crazy impactful, but Dread Servant gets forced early on. Doesn't even find a kill on the Nixus. So Control still in favor of OTP. Yeah, and I like how Sour Team started that. Oh, really good Ice Storm there to counter the dash from William Burke, and he's not able to get out. They found Perdo on the side here. He's very low, has a withdraw to get away, but Seismic Crash is going to keep this fight going. Couple of good shots. Stop me. Gonna go down. Nix is gonna go down as well. And now it's a 3v5 setback. Gonna keep Fit in a unfortunate position as they come through. And it's just kill after kill, setup after setup. Perdo looking for one more shot, but they don't even need it. 99%. Exile charged up just to try and stop it. Andrew Doodle gets the overtime and then immediately dies right afterwards. Sour Team grab this mid for the first time this game. They are on offense and trying to find a push and they can seal the deal right here. Yeah, that was rough dismounts from Wunchuk Pony. They didn't dismount either tank, so Sour Team got the refight that they wanted. And on the back of a better start to the mid, I feel, where they were together, they found the kill into Andrew Doodle very early because he was caught there. Oh, a little ledge there. If you didn't know, you could stand up here. I used to go there as Ruckus with Aerial Assault. I've seen, I've actually, the only time I've seen this before was with a Ruckus standing <laughs> up here with Aerial Assault. His Maeve is kind of hanging out like above the market on what I, guess because she's up there can be called the catwalk, but is not exactly the uh, best representation of what a catwalk <laughs> should be. Either way, she's going to be able to kind of hang out. And they finally notice there, they go for the setback. It's not going to change anything about it to fit, even with that advantage, does get burned down before they can find anything. It was 2v1 
And they get the kill on the Mave. Payload coming around, well, over the hill, actually, right now, sitting up at the top. And that's going to be the Headhunter. Pops trying to find some kills, trying to create a zone with a minute and 30 left on the clock. That was a good time to use it, too. I mean, yeah, you said minute and 30 left, so they have plenty of time to Oof. recharge it if they need to. Already Nyx is at 20% on it. Do they know Atlas is hiding? Oh, looks like he's backing up. And also, I think that trade was pretty good for Defit earlier. I, he got the Enlightenment out. He, he got people low in a 2v1. I wouldn't be too, too sad about that. Atlas for getting his stasis sort of forced out. Ooh. Great pressure from Defit. Double damage boost is really tough to deal with, but might have overstayed his welcome a little bit. Tried to dive for that Atlas, who's just getting pocketed back up and up healed for by the barracks. So, unfortunate dive for him. The team's going to have to regroup and settle back. They need to get back to this hill. They want to be in that strong defensive position. So, for a, a lot of maps, we always talk about, like, you know, press as far forward on defense as you can if you get a wide, just to stall the timer. And this is a longer map, so it works even yeah. more. But now they're coming up on the hill. The payload's starting to roll upwards once again. It's going to get difficult for the defense. What do One Trick Pony do here? They have to pull back and just find damage on them. But look, Sour Team, they're moving together on the side. That's what they had to do in the mid, and it's going to work here as well. But the first kill goes to Nixus. Trying to do whatever he can. A couple of good sniper shots on the side will always open the door for defeat here for Sour Team, potentially pushing this to one more mid. 20 seconds left try and stop this. They want to preserve any ults they can. They already used the Midnight. Andrew Duel finds ineffable, so that should mean everybody falls shortly there after 10 seconds left as it counts down. No one really in a position to get the touch. William Birkin might be able to, but he's already pretty low and getting burned down. So they get zoned out, and it's going to be a 3-3 point going into the final round here. One trick pony, one really good mid fight away from winning the set. And now the only thing that's really scaling poorly now is the Midnight. It's not going to have the same effectiveness that it needs to. So Defit's going to find it a little harder to find kills. But, I mean, if he can keep relying on Nixus 13-3 and three, the way that he is right now, I don't know if it's going to matter. They need to also kind of open things up for Andrew Dude a little bit. I feel yeah. like they're they're letting him die in some of these situations. Or he could be also ahead of them. So clean up communication a bit, be able to play a little bit tighter seconds. and get in. It definitely feels like the first round, there, it was almost perfect synergy between yeah. the sniper and the two flanks this last round and specifically Five, i think we saw andrew doodle get melted three, almost immediately two, and so one. communication is going to be key coming into this round where do sour team go for this one do you think just regroup the same way they did last I, round? i think market is smart also to fit accidentally dismounting and spawn so he had to use his cooldowns to get in that's rough no nine lives for this final point fight is going to make it a lot harder for that mave to be able to survive that's the most unfortunate thing to have come through especially since he doesn't even have the Midnight to try and give himself any sort of leg up. So cooldown's going to be pausing the game here for one, one trick pony, at least for a little bit, or slowing it down, I should say. As right now, I'm just waiting for this through time and space. It's either going to be huge or it's not going to be anything. And that honestly could be a round determiner. As Dome Shield gets dropped on the point, it's going to be a fight between these two front lines, 30% to 21, so still keeping it close. There's going to be the Ice Storm, William Birkin, first blood of this round. Great combo there, too. Ice Storm into the Seismic Crash guarantees that pick as well. Nix is still finding kills. Oh, they don't know Defit's here behind, but he misses the daggers. Uber's Payne wins that fight. That's so important for Sour Team, especially if they get Surrets here, too. I mean, two kills, clean, they get rid of the support, they keep themselves rolling, but they haven't moved in on the objective. It's 84% for One Trick Pony, and it's still going up. Finally, they stop it here at 90, and they burn stop me almost instantly. But it took them a while to get there. They have an advantage, so they can still retake. The timing here is bad, though. I mean, 40% was on the objective at that point. They're not going to have stopped me to touch, so they're going to have to throw a DPS at it. Losing one DPS and triple DPS, it, it's so much potential damage out. That's the whole point of your composition. Ooh, through time and space, gonna be able to fly through. He's been holding onto it the entire round. Gets rid of Purdue, and they're gonna get right back in. Stop me, touchdown. William Birkin doing anything and everything he can to try and stay alive right now, and he doesn't make it out. Andrew Doodle with the flank, with the blink, does find him, chase him down, and gets rid of him. Stop me, going to be incredibly low in the tank 1v1 right now. The second chance is gonna keep Atlas alive. Sheepa gets the kill onto the Inara, but he is the last man standing for Sour Team. Overtime starting to tick down, but here comes Purdue. He Pete Hayes is popped, and he's going to be able to find at least one. Or can he find more than one? He gets gripped at the last second, but gets picked off by Nixus, who is in position. But William Birkin retouched the point. And he, he has all the time he needed. That's all they wanted was this barrack to get back. The resets are going to be keeping him alive at least a little bit. And they're just throwing body after body after body here for Sour Team. The kills are still coming up blue. But right now, the trades are going a little bit more even. Stop Me is back. But it's going to be him versus two. Uber's Fede joined to do anything and everything. And Sheba gets a kill. It's just this Anara. It's going to get burned down. Overtime's going to go away. And Sour Team through a hectic team fight are going to be able to close that one out. That was not their game to win, but they managed to do it.
Wow. That that was the focus fire. I mean, I would say bad focus fire, but they just couldn't get the kills in the last second. I think the touches from Sour Team, some teams would give up then, but they didn't. They kept going in. They knew they had a chance. <laughs> just body after body. I've never seen a team successfully throw yeah. people onto a point like that and then win it afterward. It was, I think, the reset. Once they got that last touch, even though you're sacrificing yourself, yeah. Barrick staying or Barrick being able to get there, that was kind of the moment that sealed the deal because it just prolongs it just long enough. Yeah for the rest of the tanks. Also, people, if you ever wonder why you're on the ammo card on Anara, they could have won that game if he had one extra ammo in his clip. If he was on the six ammo, because he had to reload with that one second left. So uh, Ooh. put that in your builds, guys. It's, when the uh, min, it's pretty good. The min maxing ends up on the min side. <laughs> I feel it, I guess, at the end of the day. 55,000 damage there from Stop Me, but it wasn't enough. He could have done 600 more and maybe <laughs> have won that game. I was really really beautifully done for both of these teams. That was a fantastic fish market. Oh yeah. Over 100,000 damage there for Defit, 124,000 there for Nixus. So they're able to top the damage charts expected with the Luminary boost. But when it comes down to it, Perdo and Uber Spady, I think are the, the two that stand out to me the most. At the very end, they came out clutch in a lot of little 1v1s mm -hmm. just to be able to find like, okay, Defit, if he hits one more dagger, I'm dead. And Uber Spady hits the shot. If Perdo doesn't hit the heat haze when he does, like those moments were the ones that kind of kept the game alive. And they didn't buy Illuminate because the shot being close to him was never a problem. Maybe if they had gone for that, if Perdo had been more of a threat like that, they could have found him quick. But the stealth on shot, it is a really big deal. It's hard to track him. It yeah. really is. It's not. It's not the easiest thing in the world. The numbers pop up only for a little bit. Wow, Nix is 18 and four, but it wasn't enough in that last clutch situation. They tried to do literally anything and everything they could. Nixus, like you said, 18 and 4 was remarkable for a huge portion of that game. And I will also give cre credit, Ineffable, you see the 1 9, you think, man, he didn't do a lot. His healing was superb. And even though the Jet Servants were never, I think, as impactful as we've seen in the past, they did a lot. But Sheba bought so much time for this team. And in so many moments where One Trick Pony were in the advantage advantageous position mm -hmm. when they were going to be the ones who could pretty easily take a win. He either had a second chance ready on the cooldown or he had a setback ready that would help them win or stall things out. He just had the timing down. Yeah, this setback at the last second too actually saved uh, his Leon from getting that. So th just not letting Stop Me find that kill was a huge turn. And I was also talking about how I think the Atlas could struggle into the triple DPS, but I think they played it well, at least yeah. when it mattered. He had some rough times on mid, but the last minute he did and what he needed to. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to win, I guess, two mids out of the whole thing, the, yeah. the last two are the <laughs> ones to try and win. It's unfortunate. I mean, no pushes that came through, which is no. a little more different, I guess, than what I've seen out of Fish Market yeah. lately. But that's mainly because only Envy play it. And they true. know it really, really well. So as it comes through, Sour Team do tie this one up. A remarkable Fish Market in the books. And we're going to be going to Game 5 right after this. Steel Series, the official peripheral provider of the Paladins Minor League. PML guys, Sour Team evening it up against OTP 2-2 two, two after that last map on Fish Market. At first you were thinking that really that they were going to be able to actually close this game out. OTP had it in the bag and Sour Team Gore mentioned that that really was not their game to win on Fish Market. No man, that was... 
Perdo just everybody just lived a little, little bit, bit too, too long, long yeah. and that got the next person and then they lived a little bit too long and then got the next person and then they lived too long and that got two people in right, yeah. at the end of the day <laughs> it was Atlas not only did he live a little bit too long he sent a couple people back in time mm-hmm. long enough for Leon to live and and that ended up kind of being the nail in the coffin there he was the first person we saw die in that team fight, so it's only right that he come back with the vengeance right, exactly. and uh, put his foot down and get the game. Both teams at 99%, that literally that entire go through that very last fight lasts a long time. You saw people diving in one yeah. after the other. One was on point. I have point, great appreciation on for point. a clown fiesta actually working out. Yeah, I do too. Every I do once too. in a while, I think it's fun to watch. Yeah, I do too. I agree with that because it was like at first it was like, okay, well, there's no way OTP is not going to. Yeah not going to clutch this one out. It was like 2v1, and then, oh, wait, one of them died? Oh, okay. And then the rest of our team ended up coming, and then they die, and then immediately back and forth, just this constant battle. Like you said, Clown Fiesta, perfect way to put it. We're going to look at map five and see what it is that we have in the store for our final map. Frog Isle is the last map that we will be going on. Now, of course, what do people think when they think Frog Isle? I think, personally, sniper battles, always. Yeah, if we're lucky enough, we'll be able to see one, given how well the Knessa, frankly, putting that under the microscope from uh, Fish Market, uh, I think it's likely you're going to see it again here. You could see OTP go for kind of similar-ish strategy that they went for on Timber Mill. Won't work as well as when they were able to pull it off on Timber Mill, but there is somewhat of a pecking order on Frog Isle when it comes right. to a cer- couple of certain picks. So you could look the to see them the maybe try and bait our team into something, but it doesn't really look like there's going to be much funny business. Things going pretty much according to plan here so far. Yeah, I mean, Makoa locked first, but Frog Isle, Atlas, We're Khan are being hovered. Started. Atlas is hovered, taken. Khan more than likely taken on Frog Isle as well. His commander's grab is able to utilize so many different spots to where he can just throw people off the map. A lot of those edges that people would Your normally use reporting. to actually be able to get from one point to the next. Sometimes those rotations, sometimes where those snipers are, those healers are, they walk up a little bit too close. Not only can Khan push them off, but Overpower is a very, very prominent figure here. Not just in this map, but in any map, but even more so in this map. Well, Genesis Mave going to be hovered as well. And a lot of you what we're seeing so far is pretty solid but the thing i like so far that sour team have have going for them is that you know maybe is going to be able to keep up with atlas and khan i think every every single champion locked in so far is kind of on the same page there's a chance that EV strix get a little bit disconnected at times but they can have some synergy in the back that strix will set up a kill and EV will you know finish it off in the back line koa could always dive it's it's all about how you want to play it yeah. Fernando is something Doodle's actually, I think, done very well on. Not only has he made a pretty big change, a big swap Try onto frontline, but I think he's done a pretty good job of it specifically on Fernando. I have a couple memories standing out in my head where I was actually saying, okay, well, not only can Doodle play tank, but he can play one of the harder tanks because he's not as you know competitive at the moment. Right, exactly. I see the Strix, I see the Knessa, obviously, Sniper Battle, Eevee, Maeve, Genos, Maldamba, Double Front Line, Atlas, Khan, yeah. Makoa, Fernando. They kind of line up. Yeah, I mean, they I mean, they really, really do. Like, Everyone's got their man, and now yeah, it's just time to play ball. Saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, though, there can only be one winner. Game five, take us away for the final game. Well, it's going to be Frog Isle, and again, this has just been a treat of a set to go through. You get Timber Mill, you get Fish Market, you get everything being nice close, I would yeah. say, between these two teams. Well, and you get to close it out on, this time, a not contest, or not uncontested Strix. Oh, yeah. And the Strix, it's gonna, I think it's still going to be hard for them to get onto them. I mean, it's going to be the Maeve and the Khan, I think, trying to walk through. It, it's harder, definitely, for them than the Makoa Eevee to get on the Kinesa, but you know, Kinesa can kite back a little bit. Uh, I was going to say, this almost looks like we're watching a different meta. Like, if you just snapshotted this game, there's Makoa in the game, there's Atlas, there's Khan in the game. There's Nando in the game. Oh, we're like, in a different world yeah, today. Yeah, we're in a different tank world today, and hopefully these tanks can show us kind of their flexibility, you know, across these tanks that get banned a lot or just aren't seen too much. I mean, we've already seen, I think, actually both of these tanks in the first game get just obliterated as far as everyone was concerned. Good shots right now from Nixus, though, onto the mid fight. Are causing some distress for Khan, the one who has moved from banned to unbanned and what felt like the span of a week, really, for him. As right now, it's 51%. Our team are just playing the objective a little smarter right now. 
Yeah, and it's weird because I feel like Nixus is kind of uncontested. I mean, the danger side is being won, but Nando versus Khan is definitely a Khan sided matchup. Nixus finding the first pick, though. Traded out will make things still even, actually, across the board for both teams. Yeah, two for two as of right now. Going in for the burn onto the Khan. Does find the flare, finds the pistol shots, finds the one tap with the Talon Rival as well. He's 93% on the flash out. Hopefully, if you've been playing PTS, you're not too tired of hearing that because you're probably going to hear it at least a couple times this game as that flashbang charges up. But it's 99% for Sour Team before they get stalled out. And they're not even fully stalled out. They're staggered right now. Oh, it's time to come through. Nixus, 248 health. And there's the first overpower of the game. Yeah, it does find the Nando, too. So point tank fight one. Like, con point tank against Nando is almost a dream. You have so many good aggressive cooldowns you can use against him yeah. that it, it makes it so hard for the Nando to live. So good draft, I think, by Sour Team to have that big advantage in mid. Even losing the sniper fight, they, they're still able to take the mid. You know, next update, we you know you're, you're looking at Fernando's shield having some timing changes. I think yeah. some health as well get get kind of moved around inside of it. But right now, and and, and admittedly in the future too, Khan when he gets that commander's grab, resets your cooldown for your shield. Yeah, I mean no matter what, it oh another ultimate thrown into the into the uh, stasis field. I just wanted to add that to the total before we miss it. That's Dread many, serpent. Dude. That's three in one set. <laughs> this is a bad start of the day. Either way, it's going to be the midnight coming through. A little bit of Christmas theme here from Uber Spady as he's hoping to get the gift he wants, which is a 3-2 victory. He's finding a couple of daggers. A couple of long-range shots as well from him, but nothing too demanding as of yet. Sour Team kind of falling back. When the pressure off of one trick punch. Yeah, and you, you were talking about the, the Khan Commander's Grab resetting the shield cooldown. It yeah. does kind of trade one for one, at least in the next patch. Right now, it's a huge advantage, I think, to Khan in that fight. So yeah. You get, I think, almost two grabs per one shield. There's really no way to reduce cooldown unless you run Aegis. And most people aren't going to do that. The shield being up infinitely isn't that great, but very slow fight right now. Both teams trying to find it. And this is what you'd expect from a sniper v sniper matchup. I mean, just finding these shots. Nixus has been, I think, a little more on point overall than what I've seen out of the Knessa. But he is in probably the one little awkward pillar that you have over there. Everyone's just grouped up, <laughs> hanging out back here on the wall. They're going to get burned down. A little bit of damage. Headhunter is popped as well, but going to be kind of plugged into a bunch of shields. It's not going to be any kills coming up for Sour Team just yet. They lose their support. They lose their sniper. And now they're getting pressured out even harder. They even had the team huddle behind the wall. How could it go wrong, Gore? But, you know, it's still, it's, it's hard for them to get in when they have so much distance. Now, that, at this point, the Nando has a lot more cover, so that point tank battle doesn't mean as much. Since that's Sour Team's key advantage here, the Atlas can't really get in, I think, into the Strix and the pressure from the EV blinking over his stasis field. Great hook, on the Potentially for the retake here, stop me, going to be able to get rid of Uber Thady, so you're already starting the last 10 seconds in a 4v5 without your Mave flank. As Stop Me has Ancient Rage available, they have all of those available here for one trick pony if they want to use any of them, but they shouldn't have to. That hook not going to connect. Stop Me, or yeah, going to be able to come up, touch down, and keep things maybe contested over here, try to fight whatever and anything they can. As William Birkin is trying to figure out how to get back to this payload, and keep things rolling. Not really the most survivable tanks as of right now. They're taking a lot of damage. 900 health here for the Khan. They're still alive, they're still moving. They kill off Stop Me. Great pressure on the backline by Defit, though. Actually, their midnight use, they still want to convert this even after losing their con, and wow. it might be worth it. Only Nando as a tank is alive. Great setback, too, stops them from contesting, and they're just going to feed in for this point. I mean, they're getting all the kills. The resets are going to be coming through. Respawn proximity going to favor one trick pony, but that's a 10 second cooldown on your Strix that you're going to be waiting for. Nix is not going to be back in time. There's going to be a little bit, but that is a perfect setback and a great exile to stop anyone from touching down and keeping that. So they, they drop a little bit to be able to get that. A few ults that you might be able to tally up there. But Sour Team find themselves up 2-0, which on this map can almost be a death sentence. Yeah, and ultimates were used. They did they used three of their ults into the five ults up for OTP, but Overpower is, is a huge game-changing ultimate. You can win a fight off purely the back of that. If you find a pull onto the right person, maybe they can pull Nixus, and then that sniper pressure being down lets them just shove any angle they want. They can surround the people on danger. So a lot of pressure on the con if Sour Team want to take this up to a 3-0, but with five ultimates on a team that can run their compositions as well as One Trick Pony, I, I would say I, I don't think they can lose this unless they really flub the ults. I mean, that's going to be the, the big key. Do you flub your ults? Do you it's not? True. I mean, I, I think the same thing can be said. The, the, over, or the command, yeah, the overpower as I trip myself up over my own words from William Birkin could potentially 
seal someone's fate here as well as the three time and space. But there's going to be a couple of volts coming through. Jet Serpent going to be able to isolate a little bit, looking for the damage, looking for the kills. Immortal going to be able to come through, and they're setting themselves up for success. They're all incredibly low, but three time and space is going to be timed perfectly. Andrew Doodle, even though he had a good aggressive play and buys his team some space, trades his life out for. You can't contest four of those ultimates happening in the same spot. I mean, they, they were very clubbed. A lot of picks coming in for OTP, and Ancient Rage is still online. Not as good of a defensive ultimate, but if he can find a way into the back line to swing on and get that bonus damage, that, that could turn this fight on this defense. I mean, being able to kind of set themselves up 85% and rising, almost sealing the deal right now, going to get one more touch here for Sour Team to try and buy this overtime as much as they can. A couple of members alive, literally only a couple, two of them, as we see Perdo get burned down. And what went from a very commanding, maybe even, uh, let's say, back and forth first round, turned into a very, very one-trick pony-centric round two. Again, that's just on the back of all those ultimates they had saved up, and they executed them well. If they didn't flub, that's all they needed to do to win that mid-fight. So OTP now in a fairly forward, I would say, zoning position with the card uh, that far back. They moved in a little bit early, but now a lot of the Atlas cooldowns have been burned, so if they wait for that stasis field to go down, he could be their engaged target. All I have to do is show up and play the game. That's about it, and yes. that's what they did. And so it's going to be able to give them a little bit of a lead as it comes through. Good kill on Sheepa. They did lose Nixus, who's probably one of their stronger kind of pushing powers in terms of damage output. Not necessarily the best spot for a sniper to come through. Geno's getting targeted out here as the fit has to fall back. But he's creating a lot of space, a lot of zone, keeping the Genos and the Maeve distracted on the side. With Nixus back, too, they weren't expecting him, so William Burke caught a little bit in the sideline. Flashbang stunning him, too, but they're not going to walk in really off of that. I mean, he's blind, but not too much there. Missing the first shot on Perdo is rough, but he finds the follow-up without contestion, so Nixus in a great position to keep this Ooh, fight going. That rock going to be feeling the damage. Finding the good trades onto the Knesset of a Perdo. Going to be able to get rid of Andrew Doodle. That is the default factor that comes through when you aren't quite finding all of your shots. Does lock down Uber Spady, but without your tanks really in a, in a position of power, you have to give up the space. A minute left here, which is an eternity on Frog Isle as they fall back a little bit. Sour Team trying to figure out how they want to play this defense. They also fall back towards their base. Yeah, Wonder Pony have the time to take this slow. They can play off of Nixus, and most of the time, I think other than that one fight, he's winning a lot of these duels. That is kind of the advantage of Strix, that Roost card that is getting changed next patch. Makes it very hard to win those fights. I mean, it's such a massive advantage. 30% damage reduction if you run it max. Most people do, uh, as he is right now. It, it's so hard to win a duel with him, so if they can play off the sniper advantage, they can take this. They just have to take it slow. And definitely going to be good. That shot does connect without him being scoped, so you see maybe the full effect of what he's going to be feeling. As now he's going to be moving forward. A couple of good damage, but Stop Me is going to be gone already for this round. Looking to try and put themselves up 3-1. If they can find this defense and keep this rolling, and 4v5 is going to be Sour Team. As now the shots are coming through. Everyone incredibly low. There's going to be a good Void Grip. Andrew Doodle goes down. While Eevee might make it out for a little bit, it looks like the fit's going to get melted shortly thereafter. 2v5 as they come through. And there's not a body big enough to be able to get onto that. Payload, Sour Team, one point away from sealing the deal and full reverse sweeping the set. Yeah, and, and that's, I think, Stop Me just got a little bit too aggressive on the right side. They had to play slow on their sniper. That was their biggest advantage. Yes, Nixus was losing the fight, but they had time to reheal him. Stop Me tried to force the issue onto the right onto Sheepa and got picked off from that. He just cannot win a 2v1 against a Maven and Atlas. There's a reason both those characters are very meta and bannable, so rough on him, but seconds. they have a chance here. They have all five ultimates again. So do Sour Team. That it's going to be a straight alt trade. One trick pony don't have that freedom like they did in the last minute. Maybe putting your eyes on the control. Where exactly does the pressure end up? If Sour Team group the way they did last time, then maybe it will be one trick pony. And with comeback mechanic enabled for them, they are going to be able to have a, a pretty successful run here. Overpower missing at the very beginning of the round. Definitely is going to be a good start for them, though. As they're trying to figure it out through time and space, looking to potentially find the right angle as Andrew Doodle's getting super aggressive immortal right behind window. I love the aim of the Dread Serpent too to fear the backline so they can't stop him, but it doesn't matter. The Immortal going deep, but it's too late, so Stop Me dies. The Immortal doesn't end up doing anything. Now Nexus is alone on an island in middle. He, him, he goes down as well. Sour Team 
great start, and only Ancient Rage really is a touch ultimate here. And William Birkin himself finds three of those kills. And granted, a lot of it was damage from his team, but he he was kind of piloting everything they needed. It's 87% right now. The touch is going to come down from Stop Me as the Ancient Rage is popped, and he's trying to keep it rolling, but he gets burned down faster than I can finish the sentence. As of right now, it's going to be the fight for the Ages, just trying to stay alive in this, but that's three down on one trick. Pony to fit, going to look for a touch, or someone has to, and Surrett's going to get burned down because he was the one opted. Sheepa going to find the last kill on to fit. Sour Team complete their full reverse sweep with a pretty commanding last mid fight. Yeah, so remember what I said earlier about how you don't want to be the team that only does well when you're down 0-2? You can flip it to a 3-2. Uh, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. No. no. I, I think if you can win changed. <laughs> when you're down that much, then it's perfectly fine. Yeah, and they, they can. I mean, they looked great in that last fight. DeFit tried his hardest in the very, very last fight, the last second, but there's just too much health to burn yeah. through. Khan and Atlas, Eevee can't burn through that much. I mean, you had to simultaneously touch the point, get two or three kills, keep it in overtime for about 10, 15 more seconds for someone else to get there. Like There was too much pressure, I think, on the Eevee and on Desiretz, who had to throw his hat in the bag as well to make sure things could keep going. And even though, I mean, top damage coming down from the Strix, a lot of damage coming down from the Eevee, the two of them in tandem weren't enough. It was really the tank pressure that kind of lost them. And people are also learning how to play around the Makoa really effectively, I feel. He died pretty low, but that's just Makoa's ability to get out. But he wasn't really finding the damage, finding the hooks that you need to kind of warrant that pick over an Atlas, over a Khan. And the Atlas, again, a, a force. Nine kills, top kills in the server that game. So showing why some people are picking Atlas over Koa. Yeah, and honestly, I think we saw the most performance really out of Khan for this game. Oh, yeah. William Birkin, especially during that last round, was incredibly impactful. But one of the biggest things is when I see Fernando kind of in this, when, when you have both maybe premier point tanks burned away, in my mind, he's the guy who should be doing what Khan was doing, which was just standing on the objective and fighting. And he was, but you can't into a Khan. That's the thing. It just completely negates the shield. Khan is a, is kind of a hybrid point tank off tank, I feel. And William Birkin, I think, towed that line really effectively. His damage was always coming in where it needed to on the side. Found all the kills that Khan would normally get because of his consistent damage. I, I thought he played this map. At least point tank on Khan on Frog isn't that easy, but played it well. And if I remember correctly, that round even started with a missed overpower. So like yeah. going from literally zero to the top, being able to kind of keep things rolling for him was really well done. Sour Team, though, do find the full reverse sweep. They get themselves a 3-2. It was a beautiful first couple of games. And admittedly, even the third and fourth game were very mm -hmm. well contested from One Trick Pony. It just really does come down to the fact that Sour Team had the control that they needed to be able to find the win they wanted. They get their gift. They were running the Christmas Maze skin, but that's going to do it for set number one. We'll be back with set number two right after this. Alienware, the official PC provider of the Paladins Minor League.